it's like not exactly easy anymore for me to like realistically like do anything desk or any like furniture that was wooden like everything just had fucking layers of like mold on it yeah it's just been so fucking stressful recently that's my house second one this shit sucks and i worked there from when i was like 16 to like 19 for like almost three years to get everything I had, you know, to get the green screen, to get my camera equipment, to get all my son's stuff. Like recently I've been living by this motto is that uh, life's a fucking joke. So just keep on laughing at it. Like I've been taking it way too serious or something or uh, I don't know, just stressing out about trying to accomplish it or do something with my life. I guess I'll start with before that day happened. I mean, I grew up in Scarborough, uh, like district of Toronto and between Oshawa, you know, I lived in a bunch of different places when I was younger. I grew up like pretty poor and low income, you know, growing up on welfare with uh, one parent sometimes, now with both parents, but you know, off and on I had a lot of different things in my life making me move to a lot of different places. Where I live right now is a small town known as Bancroft, Ontario, or at least that is like where I lived until uh, <laughs> the day happened. I lived in that house for about four years, like uh, from when I was 15 to when I was 19. I went through my first year and a half of high school and then got expelled from high school there. I went through a lot of different like partying phases and phases that I thankfully got out of there. If you just look at my old wall, it's like all trapped out, like just has a bunch of random shit drawn all over it and song lyrics and crap. In order to like get my shit together a little bit, I got a job when I was around 16. This was working at a grocery store, which I currently still work at. It's uh, my third time being employed there. Things were going pretty well. I worked there for about a year, and I also had my YouTube channel just starting. This was when I started to make a lot of my earlier Kenshi videos. I was playing this game like every day for months, so it just made sense to start making videos on it. And it worked out like pretty well. I mean, my channel wasn't blown up by any means, but almost 800k views now and at the time like within just about eight months or so i was able to get 1000 subscribers i also found out pretty early when i was 17 years old that my girlfriend at the time was pregnant so this meant that i was going to be a father soon daddy. <laughs> this would definitely make uh, my plan of just using the job as like a temporary job a little bit more difficult because now I really needed to work in order to provide for this kid if I want to be in his life. For the next two years, I would spend my early youth and late teen years at this place just enjoying my life in my basement. I had a green screen. I had all this different camera equipment that I worked for to get. I started to get a lot of nice clothes and things like that just because, well, growing up kind of more poor, I've always had like just more crappy clothes. It was really nice. Uh, things are actually getting like put together. Like I wasn't bawling. My life wasn't like perfect. But in all reality, I was like pretty happy with my situation. I was able to make videos. I was able to go to work, spend time with my kid. You know, I was, I was doing my best. I got like an hour to kill. I'm gonna go back to the old place, get some videos. House is just right up there. And they got tarps on it now and shit. It's unbelievable. There it is. Holy shit. The whole place is like fucking half done. I can still see the, uh, those were like that before the fire. <laughs> Losing all of that definitely sucked big time. I mean, I didn't feel rich before, but I definitely felt poor as fuck now. Due to having nowhere to live, I would move in with my girlfriend's parents, and I'm still pretty thankful for them giving me a place to stay. There isn't exactly a good way to replace a home just overnight, or even within a little bit of time. It takes a long time to make a home a home. I was aiming to slow down on drinking before this, but of course with the house fire happening, I sort of uh, kicked that to the side for the time being and just let it become sort of like an excuse to keep on drinking every now and then. I was doing a lot of things during the day like spending time with my son. I learned how to drive a four-wheeler and I would drive a four-wheeler with him and my nephews around the farm, take them to see the animals and all that good stuff. For a one and a half year old at the time who's now two, he is very smart and one of the things that I'm most proud of in my life. Where do you, where do you go? Where do you go? There he is! <laughs> 
And even though it didn't have a desk, I could at least set up my computer. It took a month of drying, but it eventually did turn on again, and it works to this day. With me working at the grocery store now, things weren't perfect. I was still quite a mess mentally, losing everything at that time. I wasn't exactly sure how to handle it. Neither was my girlfriend or anyone in my family. But I was at least getting by a little bit. I started catching frogs with uh, this little frog catcher I made. He's in there. Is he? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo. Let's go. Trying to find some big toads and big t frogs because there's nothing really to do in the country except for that. It could have been a lot worse, you know? At least my mind was being taken off of reality for quite a bit of a time, but still I was missing a lot of things in my life that I had worked to achieve to get, you know, like my video equipment and everything else that I had had. And when it seems like things can't really get that much worse, of course they fucking do. And my one buddy, uh, Jared, um, some of you guys probably know him from the live streams and other stuff from a few months ago. Um, he and I are trying to hang out soon. Now, a little fun fact, I had to tell the baby mom that it was only me that was responsible to get an injured. In reality, what happened was I flew off Jared's ATV while I was riding on the back of it. This happened like maybe an hour or two after this video. But I couldn't tell her that because it would have looked dumb as hell and she would have reamed him out. So I came up with the different idea and just tell her that I fell off a dirt bike. She still doesn't know to this day unless she's watching right now. It did. It, uh, that shit fucked up. I just fell outside. My wrist is done, bro. It, hello? Um, you're going to the doctor. Wait till we're done hanging out. My arm <laughs> not good man you always do something stupid even when you are drinking <laughs> and you weren't drinking this time and you still fucked up isn't that impressive if there was ever a time in my life that i wish i didn't get an injury it would be directly after i've had a house fire lose everything that i own and then i'm left with making no income in order to get welfare or any kind of social assistance, I would have to try for months and I wouldn't actually end up receiving it until I went back to work nearly two months later in December. So for October and November, I essentially had little to no income other than the YouTube channel and a few other sources. This definitely caused me to get a lot more depressed as I could no longer go out of a house and work. I could no longer even drive an ATV because my hand was broken. Playing video games was pretty hard seeing as there's always kids to watch i was honestly just going insane just hoping that i could power through each day and then eventually be closer to another day where i might get shit together the surgery that i had done on my wrist was pretty serious i now have a full metal plate in my wrist it's held together with a bunch of screws and yeah it looks ridiculous on an x-ray there's a huge scar on my arm now so people can always make you know funny emo jokes against me i'm really lucky that i didn't end up getting more seriously hurt from that atv accident as it could have been way worse than just a broken wrist either way though that doesn't change the fact that i'm left with no income i'm going insane and on top of that, things with me and my child's mother were not working out at the time. The stress from all the insurance, all the stuff that we lost, dealing with things for like weeks, trying to get our lives together, definitely didn't help anything. But inevitably, in time, we would end up splitting up and going our own separate ways, which I think is for the best. But either way, it was still a pretty hard time for me. I had to live at my grandparents' house. I had to use my cousin's room, so I kind of felt bad, you know, for <laughs> taking her room up. I don't drive myself. But either way, it's pretty expensive with gas. 20 bucks to 30 bucks a day is going straight to gas or other expenses to get to work or to get back home. November was really hard for me and I would slowly start to get into trying to make some more videos for YouTube and trying to get some stuff out there. My one friend vibes forever. He would end up sending me a bunch of video equipment to use and there's a subscriber who ended up sending me a wrist sling for my arm when it was broken as well as a plastic sleeve to put over it. That way when I'm in the shower, water didn't get on my cast. Even though things were really rough, I knew that I had a lot of people both in real life and online that do care and do want to see me succeed. So I wouldn't give up and this would finally lead to when things start turning around for me, which is in December when I finally found my first place. On December 1st, I was finally able to move into my own place. Well, it's shared with other people of course and my parents live downstairs. 
but through them they hooked me up with a full room so I got my own setup my own space everything like that just something as simple as having your computer set up at a desk after not having that for months is phenomenal I can't even describe how it feels like it brought tears to my eyes after so much suffering day through day through day things were finally starting to get at least a little bit back to normal. I now at least felt like I wasn't homeless. I had my own place. I was getting my own food. I was starting to get more clothes and just starting to get things together slowly. And during these next few months, I managed to put out a few YouTube videos, some of which I got over 10,000 views and a few thousand views. Overall, it's been doing pretty good seeing as I haven't been able to put too much time towards it. I've honestly put a lot more time towards myself. I kind of fixed my drinking problem, so I haven't drank hard liquor in over a month now, and I don't really have any, like, will or want to. I've been talking to someone seriously for the past month or so, and it's been really nice and positive. It's sort of been making my mindset at least feel a lot more positive day to day. Even though when I do go into town, I feel way different than I did before, and I have more, like, traumatic emotions when I go around my house. I have to go to work still to maintain my life and honestly I'm kind of glad I've stuck around the town because I have been able to make it at least really good for my situation. The gas problem also is solved now because your boy's got an e-bike. This baby came in just a few days ago and it has been amazing. I've put like 40 something miles on it. I've loved it so far. It's just a really fun time. You ever see a motherfucker lose everything in a house fire and turn back to get an e-bike? You have now, bitches. Fuck you, sluts. This thing fucking rips, okay? It's really cool. Flying through the Canadian weather with all the snow and shit everywhere, just fucking tracking through dirt. It feels amazing. I have a lot more of a sense of freedom now that I don't really have to pay people to drive me everywhere. And being able to go to work for free is definitely going to help me catch up and save a lot of money in the next few months. One of the most twisted things on earth is probably that traumatic events can really help you build your character in a good way and I feel like for me I've managed to make my life go from a complete spiral downwards with no control into something that is actually positive and I'm really proud of now. Fuck you sluts. Hey, it's not perfect, man. We still working at the grocery store. We still making shitty YouTube videos for like 3-4k views, but I love it, man. I love it. I, I really wouldn't like trade my life for anything else right now. I'm going to continue working and trying to advance in my life. I'm going to continue trying to put out more content. I'm going to try and get a bigger place in time. That way someday my son can have his own bedroom and I'll have my own house or whatever. All in all, things couldn't really be going any better. So that's why I wanted to make this video and show you guys why you should never give up on yourself no matter what happens to you. This was by far the worst, like, past six months of my life. The fucking worst. But all in all, I'm fucking bouncing back hard now. America had four founding fathers and our three Canadian founding fathers who were in the basement on the wall, Ricky, Bubbles, and Julian from Trailer Park Boys, they've taught me most of what I need to know in life. Life's a lot like when Ricky leaves the fire on in one of the episodes on Trailer Park Boys, so he burns down his dad's trailer. You know, it's really shitty at first. Everything's gonna like really suck. You're probably just gonna be drinking. You're gonna be coping in dumb fucking ways. But if you need to eat eight cans of ravioli in order to make yourself feel a little bit better and back to normal after a situation like that then just fucking do it man because trust in time it'll go down to seven cans six cans and even less the point i'm trying to make with this video is that no matter fucking what you can do whatever the fuck you want it's your life you manifest your own destiny and i promise not only all of you guys but my son and myself that i will never give up i'm gonna keep on trying to do whatever the fuck I'm doing online. Life's too short to not do what you want, so I'm gonna suggest to everybody, try to live your best life. I know that's hard to do, but just try and take the things that you can around you reasonably and use them to your advantage to make your life as good as possible. I'm Cool Kid Croc. I hope you guys liked the video. This was my story. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.